So I guess we come back to the question of, okay, so I'm a psychotherapist. Uh, how is this really, why is this important to me? Why do I need to know this? Yeah, I think it's important to know a little bit about what you're aiming to help clients shift, you know, to be able to link symptoms to brain areas and then link it to different types of therapeutic techniques. We know what's evidence-based for the most part. It's always shifting, but we know where the research is, but that doesn't really narrow it down. I mean, if you look at something like prolonged exposure for PTSD, we know that um, it's associated with um, clinically significant reductions in PTSD symptoms in about what, 51% of clients, um, which is great. But, but what about when it's not? Or how, how, do you, how, how do you know at the outset who you should try prolonged exposure with? When should we be doing an exposure-based therapy versus something more somatic versus something more cognitive? And I think the answer, we don't, we don't know the answers to this in a, in a super nuanced way yet, but the answer is it depends on which of their symptoms are most salient and what it implies about what's going on in the brain. So um, we know that if a person's amygdala is so on fire, so activated that they can't even focus on something, hold something in mind, then we probably shouldn't be doing prolonged exposure. Or if they're prone to dissociation where they can talk about the trauma, but they're not even emotionally connected to it, we know prolonged exposure is not going to be super helpful. So um, even though we know what these evidence-based therapies are, sometimes we don't really know when to use them or in what order or how in a way that's maximally effective. But when you have some idea about different areas of the brain and what they do and the types of techniques yeah. that help those areas, I think it gives us a better starting point. I think for a long time, I think of the saying, give a small boy a hammer and everything looks like a nail. Yeah. And in a sense, there have been uh, therapies, different schools of therapy, and uh, hey, this is my school of therapy, and we're going to do this pretty much on everybody who walks in the door. Right. And it seems like we're shifting away from that toward a more nuanced uh, yeah. ability to, to differentiate. I remember I, when, when I was a graduate student uh, a, a millennia ago uh, that I used to wonder, you know, why are we doing all of this diagnostic stuff if, it, if we treat everybody more or less the same? <laughs> That's so funny. <laughs> Yeah, yeah. Well, I, I really right. wondered about that. Yeah, yeah, we tend to um, we tend to be told sometimes. I think that these certain approaches are these panaceas, like uh, uh -huh. you know, here's one thing and it's going to work for everyone, and that's a common thing that I, I think you just see in a lot of different trainings for a lot of psychotherapies. I mean, I've been to prolonged exposure trainings and cognitive processing therapy trainings and brain spotting ones and EMDR, and they all kind they all of work for somebody. Right? They all work for someone, but sometimes. Yeah get this impression that there's that if if it's not working for your clients you're not doing the therapy right but really we're we might be targeting not necessarily the wrong brain areas but the wrong brain areas at the wrong time right maybe it's the right areas at the wrong time so if we understand for instance that um sometimes we have to address amygdala activation before we can strengthen the prefrontal cortex that gives you an idea of the order of operations of good mm -hmm. treatment Right. So, you know, OK, maybe if let's say just as an extreme example, uh, your spouse just died yesterday. So today you're probably not going to go to therapy and have the therapist say, hey, let's try to think about this a little bit differently. It's not the end of the world. Right. You're not going to be doing yeah. cognitive restructuring. And we know this intuitively, but sometimes these therapies push us to doing maybe some of the right work, but not at the right time for a client. Yeah. You know, so amygdala activation first, lower areas of the brain first. If someone can't even feel their body or describe an emotion, probably can't do emotional work until they're in their body. So that's what neuroscience can give us is a better sense of when we should do what types of techniques.